Hi, everybody. Welcome to our virtual group. Um, if you would click in the chat box and let me know that you can hear me. Um, I'm Jordan Harold. I'm one of the behaviorists here. And we are going to be talking about motivation to change. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, so I want to point out a couple things. If you see on the bottom left-hand corner where you see the class handouts, so Josh, one of our um, psychologists, has put together all of the handouts, and um, you're able to access those through the bottom link in that corner. And so that can, is the past handouts that we've put up and all of that. So I think that's um, going to be a really great resource for you guys. So you can see that. Also, um, make sure you read um, the Before We Get Started. Um, right in front of you. So that way you know that we use the chat box to communicate. Um, and we do record our virtual classes. However, your names will not appear on the recording, even though they appear now. And make sure it looks like all of you did this, but that you're logged in with just your first name. That's great. Thank you, guys. And um, also, to get credit for PERCA points for attending the group, you'll need to complete at the end just a quick confidential online survey, and um, it will redirect you to the survey at the end of class. So um, make sure that you have your browser to where it allows pop-ups, and click that survey, and then stop by the nutrition shop sometime later this week, and you can get your PERCA points. Um, so with that being said, we'll get started. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Awesome. Okay. So a couple things I want you guys, as I'm getting everything else set up here, I want you to start thinking about is um, a couple things that I want you to start thinking about that we'll talk about later is, one, do you think that motivation is important for weight loss, okay? And then also to be thinking about what motivated you to start our program, okay? Um, specifically to kind of make the decision to come to our program. And then also think about the things in your life that you would consider to be the top things that you value, okay? So those are the things that I really want you to be thinking about as we get started. And we'll, we'll touch base on those as we go along. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in. OK, so a lot of people end up saying to us, I know what to do. I come to, you know, they come to their first visit and they say, I know exactly what to do. I just am not doing it. And I don't understand that. Um, we want you to know that a lot of people feel this way, even with, without weight loss being a goal. Um, there's so many times where we have these goals and we try to achieve them, like um, making sure we keep the laundry caught up. And the next thing we know, we turned around and there it is all piled up again, right? So we all struggle with making the commitment um, to knowing what we need to do, but actually putting that into practice. Um, we can desire to achieve a goal and at the same time resist it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Because I think that's one of the more important things that we can talk about on how we can gain some insight onto how this is a struggle for us. Go ahead and start typing in the chat box for those of you that um, are, are willing to do that. And let us know what motivated you to come to our particular program. Good, you guys are typing. I'll give you a second. Health issues. Okay, let me adjust this. There we go. Enjoy retirement that you earned. Yes, to be healthy enough to enjoy retirement. Um, to improve health issues. So those are things that are motivating. Um, being getting married and be healthy when having children. Yeah. Okay. So, and you guys are still typing, so we'll come back to that. Um, feel better about my appearance. 
Um, now think about, and I didn't ask you this before, but now think about have any of you gotten and achieved this goal that you were motivated for? Have any of you feel like you've already reached that, that point? Setting a better example for my children. Great. Great. Not yet, getting there, not giving up, not there, but well on the way, about two-thirds of the way. Yeah, and so the reason that I ask first is if you um, have reached it yet is because I think that's really important and where we are in our progress because sometimes when what motivated us to get started, once we meet that goal, it can be really hard to keep going if we don't set new goals and find new ways for motivation. Um, do you all think that the motivation um, is necessary to get weight loss. Go ahead and type that in there. Um, somebody else said getting there, my family's beginning to pay more attention to nutritional information. That's great. So we're getting, yes, absolutely, motivation is important for weight loss. And I definitely agree, but I also disagree, <laughs> which I know sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, which I am, but yes, Motivation is very, very important. But what is motivation? Okay, so when you define motivation, um, and we're going to look at that a little bit later, what do you all will? Okay, motivation. I want to know what you all just define it as. Somebody said the will. Kickstart pumps you up. Yeah, it definitely does. It definitely does. So we'll get back, keep typing those in, and we'll get back to um, the like true like definition of motivation, um, and we'll we'll kind of come back to that. So going back to the desire and the resisting a goal at the same time, it's called the approach avoidance, and it plays a really large role in our motivation to not only make but then be able to sustain changes. Um, so basically the whole idea of this is that we both want something and also kind of resist it a little bit, okay? And, and why do you think that is? Why do you think we can want something but also resist doing what it takes to get there? Change is hard. Yes, it is. It is very, very hard. Change is hard. Um, so as you guys are typing that, I'll go ahead and talk to that all you get tired and used to it. Yeah. We are comfortable with what's familiar than change. Y'all are exactly right. Change is hard. We're used to the way things are. Um, our families are used to the way things are. But not only that, but no matter how much we want something, weight loss, for example, um, an advanced degree, um, whatever, a promotion, all of those things come with a price, Right. So no matter how motivated we are to reach for a goal, getting there cost us something. And so sometimes when there's a differentiation between what we value and the cost that it takes to get there, it can be really, really hard to make those changes. So I don't want you to be typing any of this, but again, go back to thinking about the top five things that you value, okay? So keep that running in your head as we keep going. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Um, what causes this? The conflicting values. So the value of weight loss is in direct conflict with another possibly stronger food-related value. And it can be food-related, but it also can be other related things. So some of us may think, even if it's unconsciously, that the cost of weight loss is way in exceeding what the benefits are of weight loss. And I know that a lot of people are like, Jordan, no, we're in the program. This is important. This is valuable to us. And I'm super motivated to do it. Okay, but here's a thought. So what happens when the motivation kind of is decreased a little bit? The costs sometimes seem bigger, right? Um, what are some of the costs that 
joining our program has been for you, and I don't mean financial, <laughs> I mean other costs, even though financial is, is an appropriate answer. What are some other things besides that? Usually the only conflict for me has been a combination of convenience and available sources of food. Cost has been negligible to me. Okay. So time planning, meals and shopping, relationships. These are great answers, you guys. I want to go back to um, the combination of convenience and available sources of food. So what I'm hearing there, the cost, is the time. So being able to take the time to choose foods that are not as convenient and and some convenient foods can definitely be on plan but oftentimes the the healthier higher quality choices are the ones that we make at home right and so what i'm hearing you say is that the cost is the time that it takes to prepare a healthy meal it sounds like the time planning meals and shopping that's the same cost right so i'm having to take extra time to plan my meals I'm taking extra time to go shopping, and I'm taking extra time to prep my meals. So the cost of time. I think that is a perfect example of one of the things that is important here. And somebody said relationships, right? And so when it says relationships, tell me a little bit more if you don't mind or other people jump in. What do you think is actually being in relation in reference to relationships? What is a cost that you have with those relationships? I've got some examples in my head, but I'm wanting to see what, what your thoughts are. Mm, that's a good one. Don't feel like you can go out with friends as often. Yeah. So if your friends are people, ask that again. Okay. So in relationships, when you think about in relationships, what is the cost of being in our program or our weight loss plan in relation to relationships, meaning um, what are we having to give up, really, um, when you think about it? So not feeling like you can socialize as much because your friends are going out eating and drinking. Um, someone says, I don't have a problem eating healthier, but I'm married to a meat potato kind of person. So being able to share and eating the same meal with a person, for a lot of people, that's really important. Um, Doing something for yourself, being in control. Okay. Sometimes our families, um, our friends, or our bosses even, sometimes are not used to us taking care of ourselves, right? They're used to you working extra hours. They're used to um, mom or wife or whomever, father, doing everything for the family and not really taking time for themselves. So that, that's new. So that can affect the relationship that way with the change of dynamics in the home. Um, it's only benefited for me. hadn't had to give up anything. I'm lucky. Yeah, but I'll, I'll point out that even though, and I think that's great that it's benefited you, but you might have to give up some time that maybe you would normally have chosen a really convenient option and maybe having to think a little bit harder. But the point about that is, is not all costs are going to weigh the same for everybody. And I know that's kind of getting hard. So let's take a, um, yes, it is hard to focus on ourselves without having guilt. Um, and that's where we have to really work to change our thought patterns, know and be aware of what our needs are and express them to the people in our life that, that are safe for us. Because guilt can be a terrible feeling and it's um, a very unhealthy thought pattern because it can lead to some pretty destructive behaviors, especially with weight management in mind. Okay, so now since we've been thinking about, um, I asked you to think about your values, I want you to get it, grab a sheet of paper or your notes section in your phone or pull up a document on your computer, and I want you to list the top five values that you have. It can be I don't really want to give you much other guidance than that because I want you to kind of go where you're, where you're led to go. So once you write down this five, I'm going to give you guys some time. And then if you're willing, I want you guys to write down or type in the chat box 
some or all of the values that you wrote down that were important to you. It can be things, it can be um, events, it can be people, it can be um, characteristics, it can be anything like that, really anything that's valuable to you. Family, happiness, health, time, and wealth. Beautiful. Thank you. And we're going to do something with this in a little bit, okay? So even if you don't share it in the chat box, make sure you do write it down for yourself because I think you'll, you'll be happy that you did. So what we're going to do, um, laughter. I like that one. That's a good one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to think about how, um, how the, the values are in line with your weight management goal. Okay? So everybody look at your first value. Really all of them probably, but look at your first couple. Um, and so far the first two are family. The people that, that commented. So does being in our weight management program, does working towards weight loss conflict with the value of family? Okay, good. Good, I'm glad you guys. It's brought you closer. Awesome. Well, great, no conflict. <laughs> but for some people, okay, um, it definitely can. So for those of you that may or may not be sharing that it can cause conflict with family, um, taking, let's say, maybe the workout class or the support group other than the virtual. Maybe you come to Wednesday night support group with me. Maybe that's the time that maybe you would normally take your kid to church. Or maybe that's the time that was yours and your husband's date night. So sometimes being in our program or making extra time to go to the gym or taking extra time to meal prep your food can potentially be a cost towards your weight management because it can take away time that you have set aside previously for your family. Now, does that mean it has to stay a cost? No. Can you invite um, your partner or your kid or your mom or whomever to go to the gym with you? Yeah. Um, can you, is it healthy to set time aside and come to support group for yourself and maybe readjust the day that you and your son go to church? Sure. Um, so the whole idea is to be able to understand that sometimes when we have a goal and we're just not doing what it takes for us to get there, it can be because what we value is in direct conflict with what we need to do to get there. Okay? Let's talk about a value related to food. Can anybody think of a specific example of that? or how food fits into a value. Yes. Food equals togetherness for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What about this? Do you all think that comfort, yes, comfort is a value, yes. We value being able to feel comfortable, and food can provide that at times. Um, so learning new ways to fill that comfort. Social compatibility. Yes. Okay, so think about this, you guys. So think about, I don't know about you guys, but if my grandmother would make something, then, and she would offer it to me, if I was trying not to eat what she had, let's say it was, I don't know, macaroni, right? Um, and she wanted me to eat it. Would you all be comfortable saying no to grandma? Would anybody struggle with that? You guys are typing, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so I'm not alone. <laughs> um, as an adult, I could say no. Yes, you definitely can. 
And like I said, some of these are going to be conflicts for some people and other people not. So what value is present with grandma and the macaroni? What value is there? Respecting your elders, maybe. Um, maybe it's you value love, and maybe that's how your grandma shows love. Um, there could be all different kinds of values depending on your own circumstances. So being able, that's how it shows that the value of that conflict is. Um, not being rude. Well, they made it for me, so I need to, she would take it as a negative if you did not accept. Right. So what you value is making sure that your grandma's happy. But you had a great point here. She personalized the response, right? I'm going to say something to you guys that is so true, but um, so, um, so hard sometimes. And that's when you cannot manage other people's emotions. And it's not your job to. That's their job. So grandma needs to manage her emotions when you say no to the macaroni, right? And you're right. It's when we put other people first instead of your own needs, and that's a conflict. 100% right. And so this is where identifying what's valuable to you and listing those values and seeing where potential conflict is for the weight management program. Some people have families that are extremely supportive of weight loss, and other people aren't as lucky, and they don't. They have people that maybe give them a hard time that they don't eat or drink like they used to or give them a hard time that they have doctor's appointments every week. And so if they value family, right, then making their family upset could be in direct conflict with weight loss. Okay, so I could talk about this for a long time, but this is the point. So make sure you look at your five values, and you can keep on writing them because I know we value a lot more than five things. But look at where there's potential conflict and the things that you need to do to reach your weight loss goal. Okay, any questions about that before we move on? Okay, it doesn't look like anybody's typing. So if you have questions, definitely type them and um, we'll get back to them, okay? Oh, good, thank you. Okay, so back to motivation. Remember I said we were gonna define this in a little bit. So. Definition, the general desire or willingness of someone to do something. Okay, so it's a desire or willingness. Motivation, it's not just about willpower. Okay, it's directed by the forces listed above. Biological, emotion, cognition, and social forces that direct behavior. Do you all, have you ever like woke up one morning and you're like super pumped, super motivated, Today's going to be the day that I'm going to be 100% on plan. I'm going to kick butt at my workout. And then two hours later, it's gone. Has that happened to anybody? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sure. Um, okay. So then I'm going to take you back to the last one of the questions I asked you before. Do you think motivation is always necessary for weight loss? All of you said yes. You still do. Okay. It is. So here's my kind of caveat to that. Motivation is exactly what, and one of you described it as this, is the jump start. Right? It's what brought you into the clinic, getting the health back, being a good example for your families, getting prepared for a wedding and kids. Somebody said um, to feel better about their appearance. Y'all listed a bunch of different really good motivating factors. But at the end of the day, motivation comes and goes. We just proved that, right? It can come and go in hours. <laughs> so the thing that's going to help you is not just motivation, but it's going to be discipline, kind of doing the skills that we're teaching you day in and day out, regardless of whether the motivation is present. Does that make sense? Yes, good, 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 good. So yes, motivation is important, but I think it's important to also differentiate that we can still make on-plan choices on the days and the hours that we're not motivated. So what happens when um, we start to lose motivation? We can notice that when some of the skills are less consistent. We're not logging our food, we're not going to the gym, um, our water is 
low, we're tired, yes. <laughs> um, that's when it's going to be time to relook at what is motivating us and what can get us to be more consistent. Okay. So let's let's kind of move on again. The five R's of motivation. So we talked about relevant, what prompted you to make the call to the Weight Management Center. We also talked about the consequences of, or we didn't talk about this, excuse me, the risk. What are the consequences if I don't lose weight? So that's kind of like what happens if nothing changes. And I love that question because it's a different view on why I need to do this. It's like if nothing changes, what is five years from now going to look like? And we can ask ourselves that for multiple different areas, and it kind of is like a gut check, right? Um, so keep that in mind. And then rewards. What will I gain by losing weight? Weight loss is not just about what you're losing. Weight loss is about what you're going to gain. You're going to gain energy. You're going to gain probably increased sleep, better sleep. You're going to gain more physical time and um ability to play with your family, your kids, your your dogs, whomever, right? Roadblocks. This is really important. This goes directly back to some of the conflicts that we saw, okay? What's going to prevent me from losing weight? If you have really important values that are in direct conflict with what needs to happen to lose weight, that could be a pretty big roadblock, right? Um, so then, how can we remove them? How can I minimize barriers to weight loss? So let's take, um, let's do this one. Somebody said earlier, family and dinner time is really important. So let's say your family has always shared dinner time, but then you come home and you're on full meal replacement. That family time is super important to you. But your family's sitting around eating chicken, green beans, and a baked potato, right? And you're having your soup. Could that deter you? Could that be a roadblock? And why? Think about those things. You don't have to type them. Um, somebody else said earlier, not going out with friends. So social isolation could be a huge roadblock because there's only so long that we can and should really avoid a situation because we all need social interaction and so being able to go out with our friends so that we don't feel isolated but being able to participate in whatever they're doing that can be a roadblock okay so let's take that example of going out with your friends as the roadblock let's let's use that to be thinking about how can we remove that or minimize that barrier so that we can still have what is valuable to us, which is time with our friends, but also remove the roadblock of being surrounded by that. What are your suggestions? What would you all do? What have you done in that situation? Okay, look at the menu before going out. So the assumption that you're going out to eat with friends. So what you do is you prepare. You prepare, you look at the menu, you go ahead and make your choices. That's a great answer. Because what that does is that establishes control for you. And when you control, when you feel that more control, um, it makes it easier to make those on-plan choices. Um, somebody says make excuses not to go. So avoidance, yeah. You know, avoidance can be a really um, good short-term, very short-term solution, but it is not something that we want to recommend um, for you to do continuously for the same reasons. So anybody have another idea that's, that could be kind of different from what, what we see here? People having drink, I might get a few sips of one and then get back to my water. I keep telling myself all the positive that I've done and keep pushing. I can still have fun. I love this. So here's what you're doing. You are not, not depriving yourself. You're having a couple drinks, okay? So it sounds like that was an intentional, mindful choice. Then you go back to your water. So you make sure you have something to drink that's non-caloric. You can even get, if somebody is having alcoholic drinks, right, 
you can get um, a soda water with a little lime on the side, okay? Um, you keep telling yourself the positive. So you're doing lots of good positive self-talk um, and still have fun, changing your thoughts to and telling yourself and putting it out there, just because I'm not drinking or eating this doesn't mean I can't have fun, okay? And so for you, that would be changing that thought process. For some people, being around the environmental triggers of the food and drinks is what's hard. So then gaining control of that. Another option, and you guys haven't said this yet, but ask your friends to do something else that's not about food or drinks. So invite your friends to a park. Go to a museum. Go to Barnes & Noble. Um, you can do any of those things. The list is just abundant, right? Um, I've asked them to put it in a fancy glass, soda water with lime, and no questions asked except from the bartender. Perfect. <laughs> I love that. So it still feels fancy and, and, and special, right? Um, another thing, you can do, there's all kinds of stuff to do that have nothing to do with food and drink. Um, I took my son last night to a class, a free art class at Michael's to make a Father's Day card. And it was about like a two-hour class. Uh, all we had to do was buy the supplies. They taught us how to do the cards. It was a free class. So look and expand your options of things that you could want to do with your family or your friends. That's not centered around food. So that's definitely one way to remove one of those roadblocks. Thank you for your example. Okay. So motivation and readiness. When we are motivated and ready to implement the steps into action, so that's that discipline, right, equals action. We're moving forward towards our goal. So how do you know if you're ready? How do I move myself into readiness? Any ideas for this? How do you actually move yourself to start doing? I knew I was ready when I was willing to pay. Investment does something to us, right? When we invest in something, financially, with our time, with our energy, that can oftentimes be enough for people to move them into readiness, into action. That's a good point. Um, so, and it's important to know that change is not always linear. And so you may be motivated and ready and moving into action the next day, not be either, the next day be motivated but not really ready to make changes. And so let's look at the stages of readiness for change. Pre-contemplation, that's when we're like, there's no problem, N no idea. You go to the doctor, they tell you you need to lose weight, and you're like, ah, okay, that, no, I don't, okay? Contemplation is when you're kind of ambivalent to fixing the problem, where you go to the doctor, the doctor says you need to lose weight, and you're like, yeah, I probably do, all right. Um, three is the preparation. This is when that initial kind of thinking about what is it going to look like for me to make a change. So that's when you go to the doctor, they tell you you need to lose weight, and you're like, yeah, I probably do. What are my options, doc? Right? Um, that's coming to our info session. The action phase is joining our program. That's joining our program and following the steps, being consistent, logging your food, coming to support group. Um, drinking the water, exercising, and maintenance is then living the things that we've established in that action phase. But we jump around all the time, okay? Just because you're enrolled in one of our programs doesn't mean that you can't go back to the contemplation stage. Um, it can go back to, oh man, okay, I lost 20 pounds, my goal was 40, but darn, I feel so much better. Um, and you can kind of get ambivalent to kind of finishing up. And that's when we have to reassess our motivation. All right? Sometimes that can happen because we're already, thank you for letting me know. Um, it was good having you. Um, sometimes we've already met the thing that motivated us to start. A lot of times I hear people say, um, Okay, I came because I'm on three medicines, two for my blood pressure and one for my cholesterol, and I want to really come off of them. Well, let's say that four months into the program, they've come off of their medicines or lowered them or whatever it may be, um, but they still haven't reached their, like, weight goal. Okay? So sometimes this can cause a stall. Even though they want to lose more weight, 
they've seen such an improvement that their motivating factor is kind of null and void, right? And so that's when it's important to kind of reassess where you're at. What's motivating you to continue to do the things that you need to do day in and day out to reach your goals? Okay. Let's see. Okay, so on a scale of one to five, write down, you don't have to put it in the chat box unless you would like to, how important is it for you to achieve a healthy weight? So when you really think about it, okay, thank you for sharing a five. When you really think about it, how is it important to you? <laughs> That's okay. How important is it for you to achieve a healthy weight? And then think about why wasn't your score lower? And that kind of goes back to the question of what happens if I don't do this? And then after you think about that, on a scale from one to five, how confident are you that you can achieve a healthy weight? So when you think about it, are the numbers different? If your importance of weight loss is a five and your confidence level is a two, that can be challenging. So what's it going to take? So think about it. What's it going to take for you to feel that your confidence level can be increased? One of the things that I tell people when we need to kind of have that boost in confidence is what we need to do is feel success. So let's look at our expectations. Are you expecting a five pound loss when you walk in here every week? Are you only looking at the scale as a way to measure success? Are you saying that if um, if you miss on your timing one day that you've really like thrown it off or if you've only gotten 120 minutes of exercise instead of 150. So look at your expectations and I want you to see if they're realistic. Would you put that same expectation on your friend, your mom, your sister, your daughter, your husband, whomever? Okay. And then if your expectations are realistic, sometimes what we need to do is break them down smaller. So if you're setting these kind of these larger, longer goals, like weekly goals. Break it down into days, okay? So if your goal is today, I am going to do five minutes of self-care, 30 minutes of some sort of exercise, and I'm going to log my food. Just focus on today. And then once you can succeed with one of those that day, you have the confidence to go into the next day. Sometimes people come in and they're like, I'm so off track. I don't even, I've fallen off the wagon, don't even know where the wagon is. And then what you can do is um, be able to, I got sidetracked. <laughs> and then what you can be able to do is figure out how to break those down. So let's say you're completely off track, you don't know where your wagon is, and you come in there and you say, okay, what's one thing I can control today? And if you can decide, okay, today I'm just going to log my food. Whatever it is, I'm going to log my food. And then after you do several days of that and you've been consistent, then the next step for you is, okay, what other skill can I add in? And so then what you do is you continue logging every food, and then you add in, okay, I'm going to get back to my timing every three hours. So making sure that to build your confidence, you break things down in smaller steps and reassess your expectations for yourself, okay? Oh, that's the last slide. Okay, so do any of you feel like that any of your values that we talked about are in direct conflict with what it's going to take for you to reach your goal? Good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. more people are typing so sometimes I feel bad for asking off work yeah I hear that a lot because it's a lot of time here and for the majority of people we're having to take BTO or work through lunch or or flex time things like that 
Um, so I think that's where you can ask yourself, what happens if I don't take off work, right? Um, and there can be some more work that you can do. Um, if that continues to be a concern for you, I challenge you to talk with your behaviorist about it too, um, because it can be really hard to kind of process through changing those thoughts in our head. Yes, there's conflict, but when I'm better prepared than no. That's a good point. There can be some things that are conflict now, but because the change in circumstances could not be, or vice versa. There are some of you that may be, um, right now, the benefit of coming to the appointments and all the requirements of this program and weight loss are way um, more beneficial to you than interfering with any other conflict or any other value. But let's say there's a family member that lives out of state that gets sick. The cost of continuing to come to support group may outweigh the benefit at that point. So to understand that as your circumstances change, be willing to assess your motivation and give yourself some grace and know where you're at and be constantly kind of checking in with yourself about what your needs are and how you can make where you're at work within your plan. Um, so I challenge you guys to think about where you're going. So we know and talked about what's going to happen if we don't make changes. So think about what, what does it look like when the thing that motivated you has happened. I heard um, one of the guys in the group um, several weeks ago mentioned that getting on a roller coaster or a plane, I've heard that a lot. Um, things that are, have nothing to do with the scale. So I challenge them to take pictures of a plane, take pictures of the biggest roller coaster they want to take their kid to, or take a picture of a vacation. Take a picture of something and use visuals everywhere that you can, on your, um, your screen on your phone, on the desktop screen on your computer. You can put pictures um, or write it on sticky notes. Constantly know where you're going to go and be willing to give yourself grace to adjust what's motivating you, I think is the most important because not always what we start for is what we're going to finish with. Um, that's all that I had prepared to talk with you guys today about. I'm going to hang on since we've got a few more minutes to see if any of you have questions or other comments about the values, the conflict, and um, kind of changing and motivation. Um, but if not, then we'll end the meeting and um, we'll go from there. Make sure that you stay on until the meeting's ended and you'll get the link to be able to log in and just answer a few confidential questions. And then we'll set you aside a perk point for you to pick up in the nutrition shop. Um, thank you guys for joining and um, we'll see you soon, okay? I hope you guys have, have a wonderful week.